Look at that. How yeah. big are, are the packs all told? 53 kilowatt hour. It's probably 4,000, 4,500 pounds. With the V6 and a, and a full tank of 20 gallon gas, it was the gross vehicle weight of these was 3,750. So it's not really it's that not different. that different. This is a Volvo electric power steering pump. It was, I think within a quarter inch, the exact same size as the factory 20 gallon gas tank. And one loop is for the, all three battery packs. The other loop is for the motor, inverter, and charger. Well, Carter, thanks for giving us a, yeah. a walk around. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Uh, we could pop the hood and I could show you the, the motor. That Let's do it. The, the scrambler. Yeah, not, not too many scramblers left. Wow. This is clean. It is. The motor is uh, electric GT out of Southern California. Okay. So I got most of the components with all of the EV components from them. So inverter, main battery pack, motor, high voltage junction box. There's a couple of fans down here from the two cooling loops. Um, there's a, another one of their battery packs where the fuel tank used to be. Um, and then a small one in the utility box in the bed where the charger is and the 12 volt battery. And then there's space for tools and stuff in there too. So how yeah. big are, are the packs all told? 53 kilowatt hours. 53. Yeah. Okay. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I'll get between a hundred and well, probably about 125 miles of range on a full charge. Um, it's probably 4,000, 4,500 pounds. So we'll see, but a little yeah, heavier the, than stock, little heavy. Well, um, with the V6 and a, and a full tank of 20 gallon gas, it was the gross vehicle yeah. weight of these was 3750. So it's not really so it's that, not different. that different. Um, Did you have to do some custom with that steering column there? No, this is, is a factory. Is? I mean, so I got a heavy duty shaft. Um, you know, everything except the EV stuff, like the upgrades are all off the shelf CJ things. That okay. You know, you can get a Quadratec, uh, you know, like the suspension is the popular BDS kit, a little bit of lift, factory axles um, that I beefed up a little bit, you know, to handle the extra torque. Um, this is different, obviously, the steering and the brakes, um, because you don't have vacuum, obviously, you've got to come up with a solution for boosted brakes. So what I did was something that, you know, I found online that a lot of people were doing. That's how I learned all this is <laughs> forums and YouTube and talking to these guys. Um, but this is a Volvo electric power steering pump. Okay. Uh, it's actually made by Ford, funny enough. Um, <laughs> but this is in a loop with the hydraulic brake booster and then the factory hydraulic power steering box. And it runs both of them. Um, which is really nifty. I, I don't know if I'll keep this long term, but um, it seems to work pretty well. What year is this? 1982. 82. Yeah, so they made scramblers from 81 to 86. I think they made like five in 86, but yeah. They only made about 13,000 of them total. Dang. It took me about five years to find one. <laughs> Where did you have to get it from? I actually, I got lucky. There was a guy, um, I had like a, alert on Craigslist. Yeah. One popped up in, outside of Pueblo, which is two and a half hours south of here. Wow. Yeah, he had two of them actually. He had a farm. Uh, they were sitting in his barn. I mean, he's a barn find. Barn yeah, was, find. We, we pulled it out <laughs> of his barn with his tractor and I pulled it home and, you know, it was, luckily it was stored indoors um, and he had put some sort of like farm implement paint on it. And so it protected it really well from rust and obviously Colorado's really dry. So the restoration all told, I mean, it still took me forever and, you know, I bled all over it, but at least I didn't have to replace entire floor pans and stuff like that. But I took it all yeah. the way down to bare metal and off the frame and redid everything. And then I started the EV piece. So, yeah. Very cool. What else do we have here? Um, all the lighting is LED, which is cool. Like, and again, it's all off the shelf stuff. Like this is like Quadratex LED light kit. They have headlights and taillights 
uh, which is all plug and play stuff. It's got a painless wiring harness, their CJ wiring harness, um, which is about the easiest thing you could do in terms of wiring. Um, Not yeah. necessarily meant for an EV swap, no, but just no. an upgrade. Just an upgrade, but it yeah, because the wiring on a 40 year old vehicle, I mean, it was toast. The guy had torn into it and spliced in things. And, oh no. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're gonna, do a, a frame off restoration you might as well just get one of their wiring harnesses it comes with an amazing picture step-by-step -step instruction guide uh i mean and obviously there's circuits in it for an ice motor which i just tucked away um you know so you could in theory if you wanted to take this back to ice you could really could easily because it is it is it will be i have the transmission in the transfer case sitting in my garage right now ready to go in but it's, it'll be made it to a five-speed transmission uh, in the factory Dana 300 transfer case, so I'll have selectable four-wheel drive. It's not like that right now. It's not like that right now, because I'm waiting to do that last, okay. because with the transmission and transfer case out, it gives me more room underneath to finish all the wiring, Okay. and then I'll put that in as the last piece. It so then you will have gears and, and things like that. I won't shift very often, you know, around town. It'll probably be in second gear most of the time. And then getting on the highway, I'll shift into third. Sure. Um, and low for off-road. And then low for off-road, yeah. Oh, this is nice. Still have the, the hub. The hub, manual locking hubs, yeah. yeah. Um, factory wheels, obviously a little bit bigger tires. Um, What's cool is the electric GT guys put me in touch with Speed Hut. Speed Hut's got a line of EV gauges now that run off CAN bus. Oh, cool. Um, and they've got an amazing set of factory, like identical CJ gauges. And so I started talking to them. They put together a set of those same factory looking gauges, but EV. So you can get in here, get a shot. Like the main cluster has battery and motor temp where the fuel and temp used to be uh, fuel gauge it's got a state of charge gauge and then a kilowatt power gauge and it all just plugs into the uh the CAN bus system oh man which is pretty sweet that is they look so good ignore the wiring hanging down that's what i that's what i have to finish <laughs> <laughs> so what sort of power are you expecting from this electric gte kit um it has peak torque is 550 newton meters, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, it like I, ice horsepower equivalent will be about 275, which is I mean from the factory these came with like 170. So nice big upgrade. Nice big upgrade. Yeah. You know, but not too much that it's too like too much. You know, dangerously too much. I think. Yeah. I'm not sure there's such a thing as too much <laughs> And then here's the other this battery is the box. utility box. Mm. Um, so I wanted something, you know, space is obviously a thing. I wanted a little bit more range and, um, you know, so I've got, this oh. is the small battery pack that gets up to 53 kilowatt and also gets up to the voltage I need for the uh, motor, okay. charger, 12 volt battery, put the harness for the 12 volt. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, cause this is obviously taking up some space. I can put tools and stuff here, but I've got a, a little safari basket that will bolt to this. And so I can, you know, bungee cord camping gear, a cooler or something here too. Nice. And the spare tire, I've, I'm working on a, a CAD design right now for a spare tire cradle that will go right here um i thought about using the factory spare tire swing out but honestly i love the naked rear end of these with the jeep and everything the badging so, yeah that's kind of hard to give up it's yeah. so clean yeah and from the factory like the small spare tire from the factory bolted to the roll bar right here so i might try to incorporate that somehow have both options so yeah the other battery pack is uh was nice with the electric gt modular you know their their modules are you know new oem configuration and 
it was, I think, within a quarter inch, the exact same size as the factory 20 gallon gas tank of these things. Wow. So it just tucked right up in there. Perfect. This kit wasn't specific for this car. No. Just got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the engineers over at Electric GT are, I mean, they're savants, they're geniuses. And so when I first reached out to them three years ago, two, yeah, three years ago, they were putting uh, the early version of this in Toyota FJs. So they had already done a lot of the, um, you know, R&D to put it in something like this. Yeah. And so, you know, they're like, oh yeah, Jeep, let's do it, you know? And it, I mean, it's tight, but it, it fits really, really well. You're gonna take it off-road, maybe light off-road? Light off-road, you know, done? like the, the foothills in Colorado are great. There's old mining roads and fire roads and stuff, and you can just go up there and camp and, you know, spend the night. Uh, so I'll do stuff like that on the weekends. And then when it's warm out, uh, I'll daily drive it. Yeah, oh gosh, what a cool daily driver. Yeah. So I'm curious, again, the kit, it's so integrated, it's like hard, kind of hard to see all of the pieces. So mm -hmm. the batteries, are they just, are they liquid cooled at all? They or? are liquid cooled. They are? They, yeah, there's, the a motor, cool there's two cooling loops. Um, you know, it's just- All three of the packs too. All three of the packs, wow. yeah. Yeah, so there's two cooling loops. They've just got little Bosch uh, motor coolant uh, pumps. Um, and one loop is for the, all three battery packs. The other loop is for the motor, inverter, and charger. Okay. And they're isolated from each other. Isolated to, loops. Yeah, you know, work efficiently. Sure. Um, so then there's still a radiator. Yeah, yeah, there's two. You can, if you look underneath it, you can kind of see there's two small radiator and fan assemblies. Uh, you can kind of oh, see right them there. right there, yeah. One, one for each loop. That reminds me of like oil coolers. Yeah. Because that's about the size. Yeah. And you don't need a ton of airflow. The the nothing gets super hot. And there are oh yeah, there are fans on that too yep. though. Yep. Wow. This is the motor is beautiful. Yeah. You can kind of see it pretty well from right here. Yep. Gorgeous. So in terms of like what I still have to do, I mean, you can see the the 12 volt harnesses are kind of mocked into place right now. I still have to terminate them and hook them up and make it look neat and clean. I still have to sheathe these um, to protect them. Uh, so I'll have a probably a 12 volt junction box right here with you know the relays and terminals and stuff for the 12 volt system. Um, that's it. These canisters, so like... Yeah, the coolant reservoirs. You have anything spe like special coolant? Or no. is it just normal coolant? No, it's um, Xerox, was it GO5, 50-50, glycol water. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's what, that's what easy the button. Electric GT guys recommended and what I think a lot of people I saw online use. So. Yeah. Last question I got for you as I was under here. Mm -hmm. This PSC module, what is that? That's the power steering box. That is the power steering yeah, box, yeah, okay. I got an upgraded one just because, you know, you get a, a lift and some bigger, heavier tires in the factory box was gonna struggle a little bit. So I got just an upgraded uh, unit. And from looking right here, where you said you beefed up the axles a bit. Is that anything we can see from here uh, that you did? Maybe you can kind of, so I have chromoly axle shafts in the front axle, which is the factory Dana 35, which is not a, awesome axle uh but you know i'm not like i said i'm not going to be rock crawling it so that thing should be okay in the rear the the factory amc 20 axle is actually a really strong axle uh i think the ring and pinion was as big or bigger than a dana 44 um but there was a couple of things you had it had two piece axles from the factory so you swap it out with one piece axles you weld okay. the tubes and then it's a really strong axle It'll be plenty strong for this i think oh yeah so and I put a disc brake kit in the rear because it came with drums. So I just, there's, again, off the shelf kits for CJs are plentiful. Sure. So. I love that. Yeah. All right, Carter. Well, thanks so yeah, much for the, uh, for the deep dive. Yeah, this is thank awesome. You. Appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Good talking to you. Likewise.